I'm back with another New Scott interview. Today I'm here with Maritime Wrestling's Matt Bullen. How are you doing today, Matt? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Um, how did you get involved in Maritime Wrestling? Um, pretty much years ago, I um, was looking to go to uh, Gary School when I was younger, uh, when like Troy and all those guys were there, and uh, couldn't afford it, so I, uh, I just started getting bookings on any shows I could, whether they were credible or not. Um, went at West for a bit, came back, uh, started working for UCW, and started working for Wrestle Center. And that's uh, pretty much it, man. It's just, for me, it was a long process. What year did, did that, did you get involved? Gary School was back in 2005, 2006-ish. Yeah, yeah. What, was it, was it, that's when you started? Yeah, I went there, I did a, I did a, like a, 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 I sat in on a class and watched and, uh, Peter Smith was there. Um, then I uh, then I actually did like a little bit of like training for like one of the classes in the ring with Gary and uh, and the, some of the students that were there. Um, yeah, and then it just came down to a thing where I couldn't afford it, so I just started getting bookings, you know, or yeah, I guess bookings wherever I could, and just you know made a lot of uh, enemies uh, along the way because of how I did it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were. Uh a lot different than back then than you are now. Uh, what made you change the way you went about things? Uh, growing up, yeah. maturity. How, how old were you back then? How old are you now? Or how uh, old were you back right then? Right now, I'm, uh, I'm 28. Uh, so okay. it was like 10 years ago. Yeah, so, so I was yeah. Eight, eight, 17, maybe 18 at that point. I can't really remember. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, every but back then I was, I was you know, a little more jacked. and. I kept, you know, hearing, oh, you, you know, you, you got the look, you, you know, you, you know, you, what your, you can catch on to this really quick. So then, and then, and then, like, when I started doing these, like, less credible shows, it's like I walked in there and, like, knowing that I was better than these guys, looks-wise and everything else. So I just think it was, like, um, ego, immaturity, uh, trying to pretend like I knew something that I didn't know anything about, being, you know, the wrestling business. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it, man, just grew up. Uh, no ego anymore, you know, mature now, ish. <laughs> <laughs> as mature as we get. Well, that's <laughs> being a wrestler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, were you a fan of maritime wrestling before you got involved? No, actually, I knew nothing about it. Um, my, my dad was in the military. I grew up in uh, Ontario in British Columbia. That's where I spent, uh, like, the first 16 years of my life was between those two provinces. Um, Did you follow the local scene yeah, there? I, I, yeah, me and my, my buddy Luke, his dad was a promoter out there, or sorry, I had some involvement with some promoting out there with uh, ECCW okay. at the yep. time. So we used to go to their shows all the time and stuff, and um, you know, so I kind of, you know, they never really talk about anything wrestling-wise other than like what was going on. So like, I didn't know who um, like Gary Williams was or, right. uh, or, or Mike Hughes or any of those guys at the time. So when I moved here, um, I, I didn't really know who to go to, um, and I was working out in the Shearwater gym, at, and I met Troy, and he told me about Gary's school, and uh, so I decided to check that out. But at the time, I didn't realize how much it was for wrestling training. Right. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I watch a lot of interviews with a lot of different guys, and they all say the same thing that... Wrestling, the price of wrestling training is the only thing that's never changed from like 30 years ago to now. It's yeah, still, well, it's still, yeah, because like still when, we, gone. When, when, I, when I was like a little bit in BC and we used to go to, um, we used to go to uh, stuff all the time and um, out in ECCW. And, and you know, like the, the guys would just show you some things and, uh, oh, sorry. I didn't know you were in there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's the other. Sorry oh. about that. No, that's okay. So, um, yeah, this little. <laughs> Uh, extra in there. So yeah, so you know, you just get shown little things, get smartened up to the business, because you know, you just hear the other guys talk and stuff, you know, and and yes, but yeah, so that's just how I kind of got into the whole thing. Okay. But I didn't know how much wrestling training was until I was told, and I was just like, oh my god, I'm yeah. a year old kid, I can't afford that. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, who do you credit your training to now, now that you're more involved with Wrestle Center and other uh, things? like? Did you ever officially go to a wrestling school? Yeah, I got yeah. trained by Gary. Okay. And uh, and 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 uh, Dice. Uh, so they they uh, they put a school like Wildman Academy when it came back. Yeah. They put a school together. So so those were the two guys. But uh, o over the years, I you know I met some different guys. So I just you know I got some like little bit of advice, a little bit of you know whatever from those guys. 
So, you know, when I walked into Gary's school, and then it was funny because Gary was like, the, the, the only thing that you need to work on is just, you know, like, you know, you know, making sure everything's done in the center of the ring, right? That was really his only critique. Just, just because I've been doing it, was doing it, you know, for long enough at that point that I kind of learned how to do it properly without going to a school. Right. But then, thankfully, I did go to Gary and Dice because they were able to take all those little bad habits that I had and beat them out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually talking to Gary this morning. Uh, he wants to know what you thought of the training that you did with him at Titans a few years ago and how that impacted you. Huge. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was huge. Um, you know, yeah, I love Gary. I've got nothing but respect for Gary. I've known Gary, uh, you know, long time. Always, always been a good guy, and uh, and I and I wouldn't probably be sitting here doing this interview with you and uh, have any type of name recognition in the Maritimes if it wasn't for Gary. You know. um, at some point in time, you tried to do some sort of affiliation with the NWA. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yep. Uh, explain what was going on with um, that. We were just. I, I just knew the the. His name's Bruce Tharp, the guy that took over the NWA. I just knew him, and uh, he wanted to get something going on, you know, over in Atlantic Canada, you know, because he was trying to expand at that point. So, you know, I talked to him about stuff, and, uh, you know, we decided that we were going to do a, a show to see how it went. My, uh, my mistake was, because uh, the only guy at the time that I knew that had a ring was, that was local was Chuck. Um, so, you know, we talked to him and said, you know, we want to, we, we don't want you to do, have any involvement with the shows. We just want to rent, rent your ring from you. We're going to promote this because, you know, we had a couple ideas that, you know, we put in place. Um, and then it just became one of those things where it was, um, you know, oh, well, you and Jim Joyce are in the main event, right? You know, or I'm, pull, or I'm pulling the ring and it's like, okay, we can get around that. That's fine. Oh, oh you got to do it in the spry field arena or I'm pulling the ring. And by this time, I've already had a bunch of promotions out and money and stuff, right? So I just kept going along. And, and, it, and it got to the point, and, and you can ask Dice if, if you ever t talk with him. Uh, the day of the show, I was pretty confident that Chuck wasn't going to bring the ring. So I just paid everybody. Like, as soon as I got the door, I was like, here's your money, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not sure if the ring is going to show up today. And, and, and it did, and the show went on. But after that, I just, I, if, if that was the way that it was going to be done, that wasn't what I had envisioned for it. So I just... I just messaged Bruce. I was like, "This isn't gonna work." Um, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't want to buy a ring, be responsible for fixing it, have to store it. You know, to run a, a I guess at that time would have been a monthly show. Uh, did you guys only ever do the one show? Yeah, we only ever did the one show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we did a crossover with with Chuck and, and UCW for a couple shows up in uh, PEI, and um, I think there was another one down in the Valley we did. So it was kind of like. Uh, uh, it was like for the first hour, it was like NWA guys, you know, and then it was UCW stuff. But uh, uh, again, that was just something I think he was just doing to try to get a laugh out of everybody. So, right. yeah. Um, how, did you work for Chuck before or after the NWA thing? Uh, after. After? Yeah. How, how did you uh, how did you get involved with him? It was through the NWA? No, I, I, no? Yeah, no I met Tyler and Jason. Okay. They, were, they were doing some filming for him um, at that point. Um, I was pretty much done at that point with wrestling. Like after that show, I was like, "Well, it's 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 still the same old scene that it was, and just a bit not for me." Um, and then I I, got, I can't remember if I got a call. I think it was from like I think it was from Tyler, and they said that they were taking over Chuck's shows um, in terms of filming and uh, and producing something because I guess he he was really gung ho on wanting to be on TV. So they asked me if I would you know want to come work for UCW, and uh, initially I think I said no, and then they kept pitching stuff to me, and so I, I went along with it. Yeah. And then uh, you left UCW mm -hmm. to go to work for Russell Center. Yeah. Why did you leave and go there? Oh, because I had no loyalty to UCW. Okay. Um, when, when, I, when I first, uh, it, it was weird because they called me, they, they, they told me that, they, that Chuck was giving them the buck to do the shows, and they had shows written out, and then, and then it, it, it seemed like for the first little while, everything that I, was involved with me was like, right, Chuck's like, oh, no, no, you know, he's working Dylan, right? You know, stuff like that. Um, so it, it didn't matter. Uh, there was a couple guys there. I know Joey uh, Greaser, James Carby, and another one. That, that there were a certain, couple certain guys that they wanted to put, you know, use 
uh, that, that were, I guess, new faces and me and him being, you know, two of them. I can't remember who else it was, but... So yeah, it just got to the point where, um, you know, just getting always dicked around by Chuck and uh, they decided to go start their own thing and I was just like, you know, they asked me if I wanted to go over with them. I was like, absolutely. The only reason why I went to UCW to begin with was because, well, A, because, I, you know, they offered me a decent amount of money to go um, for, for at the time and what, what I was making, not, not at that time, I guess, technically being trained, right? Uh, you know, I was making probably more than three quarters of the roster were, so... Um, in Wrestle Center, you had the chance to work in a group called Heel Faction with Christopher Daniels, Tyler, and and uh, Titus. Right. Uh, your thoughts on working with them and how that helped you? Oh my God, helped me considerably. It was unreal. Um, I know a lot of people like bash Tyler on the internet and don't think he's a good guy, but. Uh, if you ever watched a television show or, or like seen anything like, like he's a really good actor, really good at getting the the point across, um, you, you know, visually, um, you know, like vocally, it, it just he knows exactly what he's doing. And then in terms of wrestling, I have Titus, who I think uh, like him and him and Burke would probably be like the two like top guys in the Maritimes. Like that's what I would say. I'd say like Burke Titus would be the two guys. So I had this, I had Titus like on my right side, I had Christopher Daniels on it. So it was just, I, I just shut my mouth, I didn't say nothing, I just listened. If I had questions, I asked them, picked their brains. Uh, I, I probably, in terms of a performer and evolving, I probably evolved in, in two years what it takes most people probably, you know, maybe ten, close to ten years to because, you know, it's like, you always hear the guys say, it's like, oh, well when I got it, it started all to make sense, right? Well, I got it very quickly because I had these two guys uh, helping me along the way because, you know, the only way that Heel Faction was going to be successful is if all three guys, you know, looked good and knew what they were doing, right? Right. And, and so, yeah, so, I mean, for me, it was a golden opportunity. I, I didn't know that that was going to happen literally till like, I think 30 seconds, Tyler came up, he's like, we're going out there. And I'm thinking, like, for what, right? And he's like, just go out there. We're gonna get a group shot. Put put your hand up, right? Yeah. Put the pinky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah or whatever we did. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So and but it, in terms of like learning, it, it, I couldn't I couldn't have asked for a better. So I'm pretty sure what that we were we were together for what two years. Yeah. Yeah. It was so a long was, time. So yeah. It was two years. Uh, you know, because I was always tagging with Titus or always had involvement in Chris Daniels matches. I, I tagged with Chris. At, I think once or twice. So, it, yeah, just in terms of picking, brains, learning how to set the matches up, everything like that, I mean, couldn't have asked for two better. Chris was forthcoming with knowledge. He, he was yeah. easy to get along with. That guy's been yeah. around the world a dozen times, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I still talk to him all the time over Twitter and stuff, man, and he just, you know, he always asks how everything's going. And, awesome. You know, I send him some of my stuff. If, if, if I watch something and I feel like it's not maybe where it needs to be or it's missing something, I say, I say, hey man, you know, can you take a look at this for me? And he always writes me and goes, yeah, well, you know, I changed this or this looks really good. Uh, in terms of the uh, the Matt Bullen character and what you see in the ring, I, that was a lot of uh, Christopher Daniels putting his his knowledge in. He's like, you're a big guy, don't do don't do too much. You don't need to, right? Because my mentality at the time was, well, I'm just going to go in and get put. I, I guess use the term get all my shit in, yeah. right? <laughs> Because you know, because I was naive at that point. Right. I was like, go in there, you know, and do nothing. Yeah. You get a bigger, you get a bigger, you know, you know, you get heat more heat from them if you do nothing, right? And sure enough. Yeah. Just got to build up to that one move instead of building up to that ten, those ten moves. Well, that's you know what I mean. He, put, he gave me an analogy one time, and it was, and it was really smart. It was like that whole Andre the Giant Hulk Hogan match at WrestleMania. It was a body slam. Was built around a body slam, <laughs> right? So he says, so in your matches. Uh, whether it's you doing it to your opponent or your opponent doing it to you, build, uh, build up to that one yep. deal. Nobody does it anymore, but when it's done properly, it'll still get a huge pop, right? Yep. Absolutely. And, and, and it has many a times, you know. Yeah. So. Um, over the years, you've had a few altercations with uh, pro boxer Tyson Cave mm -hmm. uh, online and at shows. Uh, what What's going on there? I don't know. You don't know? No, oh, you man. He, I mean, well, we got into an altercation in the ring, and then he... Uh, I mean, I don't think he, I think he must have got scared. He went <laughs> off and won a won a world title, and but that's fine, man. I, I'd be the first wrestler to ever beat a boxer for a world title if he wants to get in the ring. Challenges there? Absolutely. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. 
Um, you once said uh, you'd rather quit wrestling than work for Twin City Wrestling, uh, TCW. Uh, why is that? When did I say that? Uh, you said it online in a post uh, they were asking. I can't remember who asked the question, but you, you wrote it You wrote it on, on Facebook one time. Oh, you know what, man? I, I, I always, I'm, I'm the most worst person for like getting back to people on tw uh, um, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Uh, I might have just quickly glanced and thought that it said UCW. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any issues with uh, with with uh, TCW okay. at all. The no problems with Zero or anything. No, God, no. No. no I don't. I don't know him. I I I've, I I, uh, I met him once briefly um, years ago. Talked to him. He seemed like he was a nice guy. I popped up one time to the TCW show to say hi to Troy. Uh, many many years ago, before uh, back when I was still with UCW. I want to get that out there so there's no, <laughs> you know, oh my god, right? Um, but yeah, no. Other than that, man, like I don't have an issue with them. I, I I don't I don't really know anything about their product in terms of like who they use. I know they use like Tyson Dukes and like compete and Troy and those guys, but. No, um, I, I must have just been on my phone. I must have, I must have seen the scene, you know. That right, was yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, no, I would never ever work for UCW. Okay. Yeah, ever again. Why wouldn't you go back there? I, I just don't, I just don't like it. I just, it's, it's, um, it's not professional. I, I don't, I, I, I'll always be, um, as much as Chuck, Chuck tried to dick me around, uh, in the initial stages, I'll, I'll always be thankful of the fact that he gave me an opportunity when nobody else would. Because that opportunity uh, got me uh, in line with Tyler and Jason, which in turn got me into Wrestle Center. So, so in terms of, in terms of being thankful to Chuck, absolutely. Uh, in terms of working for him, again, absolutely not. And 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 the reason why is um, I I just don't I just don't like their product. I, I don't like the I don't like some of the workers that are on their roster. Um, and yeah, I just, I just think it's like, it's, you know, I don't want to say a lower than average product because I don't think that's fair, but you know, uh, when, in terms of the shows that have happened and then, you know, and then you kind of seen Deb and Chetta come in and the shows have kind of been getting a little better, right? But he, he, he really didn't do much for the reputation during that time. And, and that's just what it boils down to. Just not, not something I'd want to be a part of. Right. Um, you speak very highly of Peter Smith, uh, Brody Steele. Mm -hmm. What is it about him that you respect so much? His bluntness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fact that I, you know, I can talk to him or I can ask him a question. And I really feel that he's one of the, the, the few guys, um, you know, obviously other than Gary, of course, that, that'll, give, that'll give his true, honest opinion. Uh, I, I probably, I would say, bug Peter. Uh, more uh, than anybody, just just because he is a bigger guy. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, I, I I I watch a lot. I've always watched a lot of his stuff, and and you know, um, I do speak highly of him. I, I got tons of respect for him. What he's accomplished in the business, uh, his his presence, just just everything about him is, you know, he he knows how to do everything so well. Right, so like like I said, like in, in Wrestle Center, you know, he would always, you know, watch my matches. He'd come back. He'd say, hey, you know, this this was good. This was the shits. Right, work on this. Uh, but but in terms of, uh, again of, of advice, you know, he was kind of like I had so much advice coming from Titus, so much coming from Daniels, and then I had a lot coming from Peter as well. So, but yeah, I I, I hold Pete in high regard. I think in in terms of uh, if I was a promoter, he would be my he, like he'd be my champion. Like, yeah. yeah, just just because the, he, he looks mean, he is mean, he, he's huge, uh, he, he takes he takes it seriously, which I think being, whether you're a full-time performer, weekend performer, once, once a month performer, you should always take the business seriously and treat it with respect. And it's good to still see guys like Pete that are in the business that, you know, won't, won't tolerate that crap. Yeah, it won't be the same, in my opinion, when, when he's gone and, no. and not around. I hope that that day never comes, but uh, yeah, it too. won't be the same. And I keep thinking, like, who, who's going to be the guy that's yeah, going to like, take, like, not his spot, but, like, fill his shoes? Right, right? yeah. You know, because he's always been, like, I don't know, like, I guess, like, 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 I guess the father figure of maritime wrestling. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, the guy you, you... For people, in my opinion, he's the guy that people go to that take it seriously that want his respect yeah, like it, yeah. that like you he makes you work for it too which is the way it should be yeah well um, that was one thing when i when i uh got with wrestle center and they found when we found like i found out who the roster was all going to be for that first show 
and I seen it was like Pete and Gary and stuff. And, and I knew I kind of got Gary's respect back from going through his training, but I was like, if, if I can get Pete's respect, that, that's, that's like my number one goal is to like get the respect of like the, the veteran guys. And uh, I, I can't remember, I think it was the, the I think if we did a tag match, it was uh, Riddick and Julian versus me and Daniels. I think that was the, that was the tag match. I, I can't remember. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was. But anyways, after the match, Pete came up and said, that was a good fucking match. Huh. And then he just, that's it, he just walked Swallowed away. And I just looked and I said, holy shit, I got a compliment for Pierce. Yeah. Like, man. <laughs> Gotta write this down. Yeah. That sounds good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know. yeah. um, what's the best piece of advice he's uh, given you? To slow down yeah. and take your time. Yeah. Um, just when you know you got a guy in the corner, you know what I mean. Don't run over to him. Yeah. You're your big dude. Stop. You know, slowly walk over to him. Let that crowd know that. Oh shit, he's he coming for him, right? Uh, just uh, things like that. Um, you know, be careful who you bump for. It. Yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he was. Uh, he was, he was pretty good at, at giving advice in terms of, I uh, think, obviously, because he is a massive guy, but thinking like a, like a big guy. And uh, and it's crazy that now when you look at maritime wrestling, in and, and, and terms of uh, like height and, and stuff, like I am one of the bigger guys now. Whereas, you know, if I would have gotten in when I was 18, I probably would have been in retrospect like one of the smaller guys at that point. Yeah, because yeah. back in the day, there was Mike, Pete, and Kurgan, like, you know, like, <laughs> big dudes. <laughs> yeah, and then, you, and then you had guys like uh, like Gary and... Um, yeah, who wasn't necessarily tall, but... The Duke, right, but, but they were... wide, they like, were, couldn't walk through that door yeah, wide, you know? exactly. Like, like I yeah. remember when I first met, met Gary when I went to a school, I seen the size of, like, his arms and stuff. I was just yeah. like, holy shit. Guys that basically looked like wrestlers. Yeah, well, they right? you know? Yeah. And, 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 and it's evolved so much, and now you, you go from, like, you know, like old, like 90s WWE, where it's guys like Tess and, um, you know, Ahmed Johnson, like these big, huge, jacked up guys. And then now it's like, you know, well, you got really small guys like Daniel Bryan, really, uh, I, I wouldn't call it, say out of shape, because obviously I would be referring to myself, but guys like Bray Wyatt that are, you know, right. like maybe not that... Uh, Bodybuilder, yeah, life. exactly. Yeah. But, but, but can go, yeah, but still yeah. a great performer, right? Yeah, not everybody needs to look like a bodybuilder, but everyone needs to be able to go. Well, right? that's you it. can't blow it, it. It would look weird if everyone came out cut and jack. There's no uh, variety there. Well, exactly. You need to be able to have wind, though. I think yeah, is, I mean, is the if, idea. If you, had, if you had a roster filled with like yeah, you know uh, seven Mike Hughes and seven Peters, so right. I mean, you know, so it's always good to have that variety, and, and I know that. Uh, the old school guys say, "Oh, you know, if you're if you're if you're under six feet and two hundred pounds, you shouldn't be in the business." Right. right. But in, in terms of the way the business has evolved, I mean, a lot of guys, I mean, shoe wise, aren't aren't six feet two hundred pounds anymore. Right. But, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, what are your thoughts on the current maritime wrestling scene? It's great, man. A lot of shows going on. A lot of bookings out there for the guys that you know can, uh, you know, work all the shows that they want to work and stuff. Um, like I said, I. I know uh, TCW is putting out a great product. The Wrestle Center is putting out a great products. You know, uh, Mike Hughes is obviously uh, drawing huge channels yeah. over in PEI from what I've seen. So, um, yeah, so it's just great, man. Yeah, great. I would say that this is probably the best it's been in terms of uh, fans showing up, uh, atten or sorry, attendance, uh, show qualities, wrestler qualities that it was back in like the, the real action days, Grand Prix days. Yep. Yeah. Um. You don't generally work for anyone else outside of Russell Center. You did a show last August for I think that was Jim's show. Is that yeah? It was a charity right? show. Charity show. Yeah, UK, yeah. Um, why is that? Um, well, it's a double-edged ended sword, man. Uh, at one end of the spectrum, I really believe that uh, in, in terms of, of local wise, uh, if you're going to be any type of draw, right? You know, if you're if you're wrestling on four different for four different wrestling promotions, well, where's the draw factor for people to come and see you? Yeah. If one of the promoters you're working for is charging fifteen dollars a ticket, and the other promoter is charging, you know, let's say thirty dollars a ticket, well, the pan the fans aren't going to go to spend thirty dollars to see you. They're going to go to the cheaper alternative. Right. So, so it boils down to that, you know, just being kind of exclusive, kind of I feel just keeps you uh, people wanting to kind of see you. Uh, as opposed to if you're overexposed, they see you all the time. Right. Uh, I, again, I, that's just one thing I, I noticed. That, you know about Pete, right? Yes. Yeah. He doesn't. You know, in terms of booking wise, he's you know he's he's uh, Red Rock and he works for TCW. Yeah. That's it. IHW as well. 
Yeah, yeah, an yeah. IHW. Yeah. yeah. So, so you want so if you're in New Brunswick, you can go see, see him at this right. place. If you you're in PI, you can go see him at this promotion. If you're in Halifax, you can go see him there. Right. Right. But he doesn't wrestle UCW. He doesn't wrestle anywhere else. Right. Um, and in terms to um, I, I, like I'm at like like and, and I and I did a an interview a while back and said this and a lot of people messaged me and said it was bullshit but <laughs> on, honest truth is is I have a pretty decent deal set up with Rouse Center and uh, the only thing that they they ask on their end like the only thing they ask on their end is just uh, I can take bookings wherever I want work with whoever I want to work with um, they just don't want me booking out to places that have other uh, television deals in place right now. Which is fair because other guys that work for companies with TV can't book out. Right. And, and I don't make bad money with Russell Center. Yeah. You know? um, do, you, uh, do you think that gaining more experience by taking more bookings would benefit you more when you come back to Russell Center? Like if you go out there and get more matches uh, for other different promotions, wouldn't you be better off when you come back for yeah. Wrestle Center? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but then again, if you look at my matches, they're pretty, you know. <laughs> you know um, and, and again, that that's just that's just the, the, the way that it, it's. That's just, the it's other side of the out. sword, really. Um, I mean, uh, you know, I, I would love to take bookings, but at, at the end of the day, like, yeah, you know. Uh, my shoot job, I make you know like really good money. Right. Me and my business partner, we own a we own a pizza shop and stuff here in Dartmouth. Uh, so for me to take a, a day or two days or whatever to go take bookings, I'd have to charge a a, a decent amount of money right. to compensate, you know, um, being able to go do that. And I've and I've talked with a couple promoters, and so you know, and 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 the money is just not there for them to to do that. And, and stuff and then you know in terms of where I am uh, experience wise and everything I kind of feel like an asshole asking for that type of money but I'm not one of the guys that's going to compensate my lifestyle or anything like that for for rap to go and get wrestling bookings right. uh, being almost 30 years old right you know do you have an interest in going like Peter's a big guy and in traveling uh, internationally yeah do you have any interest in doing that or would you ha are you happy just doing it here. No, I, I'd be happy going over and doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, it, it just boils down to the money. If if it made sense financially, I'd, I'd go anywhere and work. Right. Um, I, you know. Uh, that being said, though, um, you know, I'm happy with where I'm at with Wrestle Center too. I, I like it. I, I have no plans on leaving there anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, they, a lot of people say that you know they treat the workers bad, or uh, and, and maybe that's just like personal. Um, deals that are going on, but I, I don't have any issues with them. Like, I don't talk to Tyler and Jason too much. I get a call a couple weeks before the show, hey, this is what you're doing. Okay, perfect. If I want to, they, they're, they're cool with me throwing my input in, so if I say, hey, can, maybe, can we try this? They'll go, well, yeah, we can, or no, we can't because of this reason. So I've never had any issues with them, ever. Uh, I've, I've, I've never had them come to me and say, uh, you can't work here. Right. Never. The only thing that they've ever asked me was just, you know, if we're going to set this deal up and give you what you want on, on my end, then on our end, the only thing we're going to ask for is, you know, you don't work televisions. Right. And at the time, I was like, well, that's, you know, because it's, it's not only a deal that benefits me, it's a deal that benefits my business and stuff, so I have to look at it from the whole spectrum, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on the support that the fans give Maritime Wrestling? Oh, it's crazy, man. Crazy. They, they're passionate. They love it. It's great. Um... I don't know. They're, to me, they're some of the funnest fans to wrestle in front of. Every time I walk into the, the forum there, it's you, you can just feel it. It's in the air. It's like, you know, you see the crowd start piling in, and it's a big house, right? And, yeah. You know, you're just, you, you, like, you know. And, and to me, it just it, it makes it a better show. Yeah. I'm, more, I'm more calm in there when I hear them. It's when I start, it's like, I find, like, I kind of get a little panicky when, when they're dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? Now, yeah, in, in, in my opinion, I've been to a lot of shows in a lot of places uh, outside of like your top indies like Ring of Honor or PWG in uh, California. Um, I think the Maritimes has the most passionate group of fans yeah. of anywhere that I've seen. Like they always come and they're always so supportive. You Absolutely. Know? Like, yeah. and, and, and I think that they were just like everybody else. They were waiting for a good product to come yeah. along, something that they could, you know, and... And, and despite what you, what you want to say about Wrestle Center, I mean, people say it, oh, they're just they just hot shot, they keep hot shotting themselves, 
and, and they're to the point now where they got to keep bringing in bigger and bigger and bigger names. But you know, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. I, I think that there there obviously is a, a plan there, and, and they know what they're doing and who the, who they're bringing in. Because uh, they, you know, uh, obviously they brought in AJ Styles because of all the. Um, stuff that was going on at the time with him with leaving TNA going yep. over to Japan and stuff uh, you know so they brought him in for the first show and uh, you, you know and, and that really got a lot of people's interest right oh IWGP champion you know well, when's the last time and I like when's the right when's, he you know, brought the belt here too yeah, which was cool <laughs> not, not, not to sound like a mark or anything yeah. but did you ever think like like how long have, how long have you been involved in the maritime wrestling scene? Uh, fifteen years. And did you ever think in fifteen years you would ever see anybody walking out of into a, a Nova in, in Nova Scotia into a, a, a ring with the IWGP title? No, that, yeah. it, it, it it was definitely a big deal. Like, right. Yeah. Right. And then Bobby came. Bobby Roode came oh, with the, awesome. with the TNA title. Like yeah, it was. I'm a, a huge fan of Bobby. Roode. Yeah. Uh, mainly because when I started watching, uh, when I started familiarizing myself with the maritime stuff. And then I seen Bobby when he used to have the short hair and it was all bleach blonde. blonde. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, and then I, you know, with TNA and when, when Bobby came and I seen, and then they, I seen that he was working tighter. So I was like, I was more like at the point like, oh my god, I got that. I will watch this match, right? Yeah, they uh, they had one of the best matches too. That's been here in a long yeah. time. They they tore it up that night. Yeah, absolutely. I remember Gar Gary ref that match, and you, yeah. if you go back and watch it, you can watch Gary. Just kind of standing there at times when he's supposed to be refing because he was watching the match yeah, and how good absolutely. it was. He's like, "Oh crap, I have to count." You know? everybody, everybody in the back was watching. Yeah, I mean, it was great. Know, the, the fact that you, you know you, you had Bobby Roode who was like, um, I guess maybe the poster boy back in the day for like around here. Yeah, it, it, he was relatively new. He'd been around at that point from three or four years, right. but he wasn't a name yet. But no. that he was definitely the best. Like he, you, I had never my first real action wrestling show. I didn't know anything about independent wrestling at, at that point. And Bobby came out, and he, I think he wrestled Joey Legend that night. And I was like, holy crap. I'm like, you can tell he was better than everybody, you know? Right, like, and then yeah. he returns how many years, 15 years later, yeah. as the TNA World Champion. Yeah. Right? So that, that's pretty cool, uh, 360 there. Yeah, definitely. Um, thoughts on the support the fans give you? Um, good and bad, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got the respectful fans that, you know, they they just follow me, they like my stuff, they, you know, support. And then I have the fans, you know, that are kind of weirdos that message my wife and, and stuff like that, so. Message your wife, is that it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, who's this? I won't say any names. That's funny. Like, I'm like, well, you know, block them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so uh, for the most part, though, they're like, the support they show me is great, man. Yeah. I, 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 I play uh, by heel, obviously. Yeah. No, the, the, they the, they still cheer for me. They're still into my stuff, so that's cool. And and in turn, you know, like I'm I'm probably gonna hear these go around giving them like fist pounds and stuff, right? Right. Just because they're you know they're 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 good people, man. They spend you know the, the we don't maritimers, man. There's not we don't make a lot of money. So it's not a, a province where it's like Ontario or Alberta, BC, right? You know, so when people are, are going out there and they're spending that type of money to be entertained. You know, if they're if they're cheering you, you know, go with it. You know, if they're if they hate you, go with it. You know, I've I've gone to some shows they've been cheering me. I've gone to other shows they've been booing the yep. crap out of me, right? Yeah, as long as they're making noise, that's, that's all it. that yeah, matters. Like right? when 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 they're sitting on their hands, that's when you got to be worried, that, that, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and and I appreciate everybody's support that they've shown me along the way as well. Absolutely. If you could put one match on a DVD to show somebody what you do, what you do of yours, uh, what match would you choose? That's so hard, man, because I've liked a lot of them. Yeah. Um, you can pick a couple if you want. Just yeah, well, my, my, okay, so I'll pick two, because two stick out to me. Um, my, my first match with JP for the IFWA heavyweight title uh, back, uh, I think it was last June. Was that the DQ? Match? DQ, yeah, yeah, where I beat him by DQ, and they yeah. took the belt from him. Um, in terms of match-wise, I, I thought that was really, really good. Um, and, and, and then my tag match with Daniels against... Uh, Riddick and uh, and Julian, um, mainly because um, I, I credit that match is where it finally clicked for me. It's like okay, I got it. I got it now, yeah. right? Because uh, Daniels was so good at breaking the things down, to, yeah. so simple, right? To, and then you know, uh, but just I, I like the finish of that match, where it was like the double swerve into the Cole Cole's line and stuff like that. So I, I would say that those would probably be like if I was to send off matches, those would probably be my top two.
to send off. Um, who do you think is the best? You kind of answered this earlier, but who do you think is the best wrestler in the Maritimes right now? Well, Burke Titus. Yeah. yeah. Um, Russell Center has some couple big shows coming up on April 8th in Cape Breton and April 9th at the Forum. Uh, Two Cold Scorpio is going to be on both those, yeah. and Kurt Angle is going to be on the one at the Forum. Uh, your thoughts on those shows? Well, hopefully they draw good. <laughs> <laughs> your thoughts on them bringing in uh, Kurt Angle, who, who's a, probably the biggest name to come here since Bret Hart's first time in 2010, yeah, I'll I, I'd that. say. I'd give you that, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was shocked. I, I was never expecting uh, uh, them to be able to bring, uh, you know, not, not that they probably couldn't afford to bring in talent like that, but the, the fact that it was like Kurt Angle, I was like, oh, well, geez, that's pretty, that's different. You know, because, you know, you got the norm of the guys that take indie bookings and then you have, you know, like your Angles, your Stings, your Van Dams that sometimes do, sometimes don't, right? Yeah, who, who's, Angle could be legitimately go down as one of the best ever, like, in, oh, in, 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 in my opinion, like, yeah. like top five, top ten yeah. ever, for sure. I think you will be, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the shows. I've, uh, I remember Two Cold Scorpio from, like, ECW days when I, used to, when I was a kid, I used to watch that stuff. Um, Kurt Angle obviously is gonna gonna be a big draw for the yeah. company. Yeah. Um, he's the guest ref in your match with JP. Uh, this is your second shot at the Russell Center title. The yeah. IFW. Do you know what IFWA stands for? <laughs> International something wrestling association. <laughs> International. I, I've, ne I've never known. <laughs> I don't know. I remember it, they told me once because I asked that same question. I was like, "What does this stand for?" Yeah. He told me that. Um, it, this is your second shot at that title. Uh, how do you think that match is going to go? Well, no, it's not going to go good for JP. You know, I mean, there, there, there's some real legit heat there. Um, Where does that stem from? Where it, does it, that, just, it seems to be a, a few people have problems with JP. Yeah, I never, I never had any issues with JP ever. Yeah. Uh, JP's always had an issue with me. Um, it just, you know, we've never been buddies. Uh, not you know um, we never really speak much. Uh, we wanted, and then when uh, I was told that they call, I can't. I think it was Tyler called me, and told me that you know, JP's leaving. Um, so we're gonna put the belt on you because we're gonna do something with Daniels and get the belt on him or whatever. I can't. I can't remember what the exact setup was for that. But um, so they were like, yeah. So JP's leaving. You're gonna take the belt from him. And then he just started to, like dog shit me in politics. And then I'm thinking like. Well, if you're leaving, why why are you gonna bat like like that would have been a good opportunity. I I, I mean in hindsight, looking back on what I know now, it, it probably probably wouldn't have been a good opportunity getting the belt because then I would have dropped it. And then it's like, well, where does a guy that's pretty unknown go go from there, right? Um, but it, but at the time, I was thinking, you know, it's just like, well, who, like who who are you to cost anybody any opportunities that, that you know are presented? It's like you're the champion. You don't want to be here. You're leaving. You drop the belt to whoever the promoter wants you to drop the belt to. Right. right? It goes back. It's like the whole Montreal screw job thing. It's like it could have been prevented if Brett just did what he was told to do by Vince. Uh, you know, and, and that's and that's my perspective on it. Is you get paid, you do the deal going out. Or you give the belt back and you don't show up, right? Yeah. You know, uh, you know and he was threatening to do that and stuff. And, and it just came to the point where it was just, you know, uh, it, it was already out there. It was already advertised that it was going to happen. And it was just like, well, you know, we'll, I, like I even told him, I said, well, I'll drop, the, uh, I'll lose to him or whatever you guys want. And they're like, no, no, he's leaving. And, um, you know, and then it, anyway, somehow the, the count out deal or disqualification or whatever it was, that was the finish they came up with. So it kind of stemmed from that because it just really, it, I felt like it kind of, at the time it kind of hurt my, my character and my development. I, I, in hindsight, I don't think it did at all. I think that, I think that maybe getting the belt at that time would have hurt my, my character and stuff. Um, but yeah, just, just he's an asshole. Yeah, he is. You know it as well as I do. Like, you don't have to say nothing. I mean, you might like him, but he, he, I'm sure maybe outside of the wrestling, he's nice, he's, he's a good guy, but... He's an asshole. He doesn't care about anybody other than himself. He doesn't want to make anybody else look good. Um, I, I don't think that he's ever came up to anybody after the match and said, "Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it." Or you know, he's never come up to me and said, "Hey, man, sorry about costing you an opportunity." Right? Because of wrestling, that's what it is. You know, you wait for opportunities to present themselves. 
and you either grab the ball and you run, or you grab the ball and you drop it and trip over it. And that's just how, how it is, right? And, 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 and who knows what could have happened if he would have done what he was supposed to do that night. Right. Could, could have turned out really good, could have turned out really bad. People may not have cared, right? Yeah. But, and, and, then, um, and then he was mouthing me off on Jason's, was that mouse trap? Is yeah, that the show's called. I think so. Yeah, that stupid show. Something that <laughs> I was in the business for a couple months, and that it would have put the company down, putting the belt on me. But then he, he's he's there talking like that and, and being like that, and you know. So I, I, I I'm debating whether I'm going to beat the crap out of him in the ring on on the ninth. <laughs> uh, he he did leave last year after that match with you, and then he came back. Yep. And they put the title on him again. Yeah. You stay through that whole time. Mm -hmm. Do you feel him coming back and getting the title immediately was uh, disrespectful to you for something that you were working towards? No, no. Because um, at the time I was involved in uh, an uh, angle with the students, right? Yeah. I, I don't think Tyler and Jason ever wanted to push me. I don't think Tyler and Jason ever looked at me and went, "Okay, well he's he's going to be the guy that's going to main event a forum show against JP with Kurt Angle as the ref." Yeah. <laughs> right. I think it was um, going out there, being able to deliver and in the ring in certain situations where I think that they didn't think I could. And, and, maybe, and maybe they sent me out there because maybe that was going to be their way of like, okay, well, if he can't perform or do this, maybe we'll, this will, we'll get rid of him or whatever. Yeah. Right? But anyways, every time I went out there and you know, I did what I was supposed to do and got over, I, I organically started getting over with the, with the fans. And, and I think it was now it's to the point where they didn't have a choice yeah. because... Yeah, and, and I can attest to that too. I've refed a few of your matches yeah. and the crowd definitely reacts to, to what you do. People love that spine buster yeah, that absolutely. you hit. Like they're definitely getting behind you. Yeah. Um, what does the future hold for Matt Bullen? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's yet to be written. <laughs> yet to be written. We'll see. Uh, do you have any uh, closing comments or anything you want to plug, wrestling-wise, not wrestling-wise, that uh, you can plug your pizza shop? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, <laughs> traditional pizza up in uh, Highfield Park in Dartmouth. Um, no, I just appreciate being on here, man. I appreciate the fans and the support. I hope you guys come out uh, on the 8th in Cape Breton, the 9th in uh, the Forum, and uh, enjoy a good night of wrestling. And I appreciate fi finally... Finally being on a new Scott video. This is an accomplishment in itself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.